Um, all right, so we'll uh, continue. Let's speak about this interesting subject of uh, presumption. And we were saying that sometimes without a basis in the word of God, we, we believe things and we expect those things to be fulfilled. It can be, it can be a simple matter in which we are believing so it may not affect us greatly, but it can also be an important matter. For example, right? imagine that there is a believer, he has a family, children, wife, home, children go to school, everything. Now, without proper understanding, they go for a meeting and somebody says, God is calling you, you have to go for ministry. Uh, so, full-time ministry, God is calling you. If the believer is not strong in the word, what, what, what will be their first reaction? Of course, they love God. They want to serve God. So, uh, they obey the prophetic word. God is calling me to full-time ministry. Right? So, next day, go to work, resign. Okay? See, but the thing is, if that is a word which is from God, okay, sometimes there are matters in which we have to do things beyond our logic because that's how uh, miracles happen. You know, do you remember the time uh, Jesus walked on water? Jesus told, okay, bring all the, all the uh, pots, fill it with water. It will turn, water will turn into wine. Now, because they believed him, okay, these miracles took place. Because it's not logical. If you fill a pot with water, how can it become wine? There's no logic. Or if you look at Jesus saying, okay, bring what you have, one little boy's lunchbox, bring it, and uh, we will feed 5,000 people. We'll all just look at Jesus like, what are you talking? How is it possible? There's no logic. So there are times when God says us to, tells us to do unusual things. Sometimes, okay? But most times, we must use our mind. Now think about the example in which I told you there is a, uh, you know, like a, a man married with children. If next day he goes and resigns, what will happen to his family? Where will the money come from? How will they pay their bills? Okay. What, what about their future? So these are things to think about. Unless they are very clear that, you know, God is surely calling me tomorrow itself. I have to go and resign. Okay. If you're convinced, your mind, your reason, everything, you're convinced that you've heard from God, go do it. But if you're not, can you see how dangerous that decision can be? Yes or no? Yeah, because that is what we call presumption. When, you're, when we are just assuming that, okay, I will take this step, everything will work out. I have faith. Is it really faith or is it presumption? So, see, there are some decisions, it won't affect you much. Okay? But some decisions can affect us um, it can impact our lives, not just our lives. It can impact the lives of the people connected to us. You got it? So that is why we need to really think. One is hearing from God. But hearing from God does not mean don't use your mind. Yeah, once in a while, like Abraham, God may say, you don't know where you're going, but you go. That's fine. But that's only once in a while. But all other times, we have to use the mind. God is not against the mind. God is not against knowledge. God is not against developing in maturity. That is the responsibility of every believer. So if we just keep saying, faith, faith, brother, how are you going to do? By faith, I'll do it. You know, by faith, I'm going to live by faith. Fine, you're going to live by faith. What does that look like? What are you going to do? What exactly are you going to do? I don't know. I will just live by faith. See, 
where where is your mind where is your plan where is your thinking just because there is fate don't throw away the mind you got it for example you see we wake up in the morning right you have a choice what breakfast shall i have right if you okay if you had a choice for some people there's no choice whatever is given in the morning you have to have now if there is a choice now tell me which is god's will which breakfast is god's will do you ever ask that question god which is your will should i eat puri or should i eat you know bread and then you decide okay god's will is i have to eat bread today i need bread we don't ask right because see most of our normal lives we just live by reason reason or our mind our thinking we develop that capacity where we know broadly we know god wants us to keep our body healthy so i'm eating any healthy breakfast is fine you got it why how do you know that because your reasoning you worked on your reasoning and your reasoning is telling you it's fine you don't even have to ask god which is the which breakfast is the will of god you got it so most of the decisions that we make as believers we don't really need to ask god okay god what should i do what should i wear we we don't have to because you have a reasonable um what do you say like a framework in your mind and you know okay this is fine this should be fine i can learn this i can do this i can eat this no i can step out at this time it's fine so the point that we are trying to make is yes faith is there and sometimes god calls us to do things which are beyond our logic but most of the time we need logic you got it okay so don't to just simply say by faith it's actually foolishness sometimes i'm going to live by faith i'm going to work by faith yeah okay like what 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 exactly are you going to work as or do people have no idea now when things go wrong what what do we do as believers we feel like you know oh god only told me now see i am in so much trouble okay but that's that's not because of god that's because we never used our mind right when we make a decision we must think how is this going to affect me how is this going to affect my future how is this going to affect my family you got it how is this going to affect my church if it is going to affect every everyone positively okay god is calling me to do this i will do this and uh, i will get some counsel so basically you are engaging your mind thinking okay then it becomes a useful decision now as i shared earlier sometimes god may call us to do something which we can't understand in those situations okay you go ahead you just do it and uh, but it it will be beneficial okay right so most of the time we need our mind see there are many scriptures which are listed out in your notes here on page 94 proverbs 13 and verse 16 it says every prudent man acts with knowledge but a fool lays open his folly that means that we need some knowledge on the basis of understanding we have to make a decision okay that's the kind of people that we should be then proverbs 19 verse 2 also it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge and he sins who hastens with his feet so you see that i've just read two scriptures but both of them say it's good to increase in knowledge knowledge about everything i mean this is god's world right so if you want to uh, study more science great it's god's world god's principles you'll enjoy learning all the things that god made or if you want to grow more in your biblical understanding knowledge word of god theology you want to learn more great 
increase your knowledge don't be in the same place right so we can increase in knowledge in any any area that we desire and it's a good thing it's a good thing for believers don't don't ever feel that learning more is um, uh, you know god can use me okay so why should i learn i don't need to god sometimes we give examples of people oh they never went to bible college they never did any classes but god is using them powerfully praise god you know god uses people powerfully whether they have knowledge or they don't right but what does the bible say if you have the opportunity to learn then learn right because we can we can be better uh, we can be stronger we can be uh, sharper if we learn if we develop ourselves you got it so uh, just because we are saying believers have to be strong in faith we should not become weak in knowledge weak in our mind ability of our mind become strong in everything be strong in the faith strong in knowledge strong in understanding strong in your reasoning capacity okay normally we just use our rational mind day to day all the decisions that we make so uh, it it needs to be renewed by the word of god and strong then we can make good decisions right so sometimes we don't have a clear cut um uh, let's say even though we have a renewed mind we are not able to make a we are not getting a clear answer from god then what to do then what do you do say for example a student they have applied to two um two colleges okay both colleges as far as their reasoning is concerned is good because it is close to home not very expensive good college everything right so they have applied to two colleges they have prayed 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 uh, and they have used their renewed mind both the colleges are giving them admission now, which college to take how do you decide how to decide now which one both are good we have used all our reasoning we have used it correctly and we are joining so which one to take how would you how would you select ha huh? okay 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 so uh, how will god direct you with his will hmm okay god will give an answer okay so usually how does he give the answer through whom yeah yeah through others through the word word is the primary thing but uh, by the holy spirit right he can give us like in times when we have used our mind and we are still in a place of confusion the uh, we can depend on the guidance of the holy spirit and we can say holy spirit you show us because what does the bible say god knows the end from the beginning isaiah 48 he already knows the end of the chapter so god knows which will be the best option for us so we can say holy spirit you already know which one is going to work out best for me you please show me right so we depend on the leading of the holy spirit so in general this is how we live our lives one is the renewed mind which is strengthened by the word of god second is the leading of the holy spirit okay so we we keep going by this and uh, we make our decisions choices and keep moving forward in life now there will be times 
when uh, let's say even when we are making big decisions we may not get a word from god right like we may not have a particular word from god uh, where you know we want to dream a vision or uh, you know god spoke to me when i could hear the voice of god angel came to me nothing you're making a big decision in life but you're not having any spectacular word from god you know even in our lives sometimes we make big decisions without any of these because we are going by the god's you know his consistent way of leading us you understand throughout god is leading us in a certain way so just because he didn't speak by a vision or a dream at that point in our lives you know when we we needed to um, start a ministry or you know buy a house we can still have confidence that okay god is with me i didn't get you know a vision or anything but through my renewed mind i know what i'm doing is correct what i'm doing is good so we can actually move ahead okay so this is the importance of the mind and a renewed mind so as believers you know let's not uh, say that um, god is god is great you know he will use me anyway so i don't need to develop myself i don't need to develop my mind i don't need to learn i don't need knowledge i don't need skill okay so we shouldn't say that in fact believers should be the sharpest both in the spirit and every ability okay when you think of people like uh, joseph people like uh, daniel what do you read they were men of excellence men of authority influence right they were able to do all things so they carried the spirit of god but they also had ability to lead people so develop develop oneself develop in knowledge develop in skill there's a nice scripture um this is ecclesiastes 10:10 10. it's on page 94 it says if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge then he must use more strength but wisdom brings success okay you know what it means it simply means in the simplest uh, understanding if there is a tree and we want to cut it we would use an axe am i right we'll use an axe okay now if the axe is blunt or in other words it's not sharp then we can only uh, you know imagine how much effort the person who's cutting the tree has to take because it's not sharp he has to put all his energy and just chop away right so the scripture is saying that but if you use a sharp axe then what will happen it will be faster the person who is cutting needs to put less effort to cut the tree so the writer is telling us same way if we are sharp in our skills then we are or when we carry wisdom things are done faster and better okay otherwise what happens the other uh, the flip side is true we have to put more effort uh, it's tougher it's painful and even the results may not be good so there's an encouragement encouragement to develop ourselves when we become sharp we'll be able to make good decisions faster uh, do good work better work right uh, quickly and be a blessing for the people so just because we are believers you know to to just say uh, yeah by faith it will all happen by faith god will take care you know that also people say right god will take care brother how how will you take care how what are you going to do god will take care we put all the responsibility on god whereas he has also given us some responsibility okay we can't just um, give up on our responsibility like that we need to think so utilize the mind okay renewed mind if we are not able to make a uh, if we don't know what decision to make depend on the holy spirit got it and move in that way so the renewed mind is a huge part of a believer's life 
um, and one needs to renew it. But of course, as I stated earlier, sometimes we may have to uh, go with things which are not logical. Sometimes it happens, like Abraham, we already said. Sometimes God will say, do this, do that, you know, give like this. And you're like, oh God, if I give, I won't have anything. But it's okay. You give. So there are times when we will need to do that. So there's a scripture in Proverbs 3, which we all know. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So uh, sometimes we can't depend on the mind. We have to do things beyond the mind. Okay? Um, but be careful when we um, make those decisions. Yeah. And presumptions are um, very dangerous. They can, uh, as I told us, uh, when we make a wrong decision, a wrong big decision, it affects people. It leads people into error when we reject the truth. So uh, when we did God's generals, do you all remember? We did uh, one session where... Um, actually, a couple of sessions we, we talked about ministers, missionaries. Okay, so uh, there is one particular man by the name of uh, Alexander Davi. Okay, Alexander Davi, who had a very, very powerful ministry. And uh, his ministry was marked by signs and wonders. People would come get healed, people would come get delivered. Very powerful. You can read about him. Everything was great. But what happened is maybe, we, I mean, we don't know why things went wrong, whether he was not giving attention to the word of God, understanding it correctly and applying it correctly. But towards the end of his ministry, he started saying things like, uh, you know, I am Elijah. And uh, uh, so everyone come like, I am Elijah and uh, something about the second coming. I don't know exactly what uh, Aaron's teaching came out of his, his uh, life, but the good ministry which he had towards the end, it was, it was so chaotic and it affected people. It affected people's lives because, you know, this is what he was teaching. It was not the truth anymore. So presumption at its highest can look like this. Uh, and it's a big warning for us. Don't presume things. Go by the truth. What does the word of God say? Right? Apply reasoning, logic, and uh, see, OK, is this exactly what God wants me to say, do? Am I interpreting the word of God correctly? OK, then let me teach it. Then it will benefit the people. But if we are not careful, Right? Uh, then, first of all, we did not understand the truth. And then we are going and telling everybody what to do. And people are getting confused. People are facing difficulty in their life. Got it? So, uh, these are the problems, and it can go to, you know, uh, such heights if we are not careful, which is why we are saying don't discard the renewed mind. Renewed mind is not automatic. Renewed mind is a mind on which you and I as believers, every day we are working. Every day we are taking the word of God, putting it inside. And our mind is getting renewed. It's getting changed. The renewed mind is understanding what is the will of God, right? What does God say? That is the renewed mind. So develop a renewed mind. Renewed mind will help us in our personal life, and to guide the people. OK? So this is a little bit about faith and presumption and mind. Any, any thoughts, any doubts, questions along these lines, you may please ask. OK, Akhil says, is casting a lot OK, like they did in the New Testament at times when you have to choose between two options? OK, so he's saying, you know, casting lots, you'll just put it in two chits, mix it, put it down, pick it up, right? Is it correct? Is it correct? Um, see, yes, it happened in the New Testament also. 
they actually practiced it in the old testament okay that's how this habit or this this um uh, you know this act of casting lots came about why did they do it in the old testament because in the old testament holy spirit would only come upon um like selected selected um, roles a king a prophet a priest so holy spirit would only come on them and anoint them common man did not have the holy spirit coming upon them okay so we don't read about that generally so um they could not prophesy so they they used to do it this way they will pray and they will just put lots pick you remember jonah they picked and then it was jonah they threw him in the water but today after jesus died he rose again what did jesus do he sent the holy spirit got it now we have the holy spirit so what is the need to put put the um, cast lots we don't need to do it right so uh, for a believer we don't need to put the chits and pick the answer because now things are different the the god who knows my future is living inside me i can just ask him right and that's how god would give us the answer that's why casting lots is not necessary but you know god is so gracious sometimes uh, unknowingly when believers do these things also god is so gracious he guides them anyhow right so it has happened uh, but not necessary to do these things uh, akhil i hope you got your answer okay great uh, now uh, nidel says ma'am what does it mean to wait upon the lord can i have a recommended reading on this subject what does it mean to wait upon the lord so uh, i would suggest to you there is an apc publication by the name of the presence of god the presence of god uh, please look it up uh, it gives a lot of insights about waiting waiting upon the lord okay so uh, i i i think that should be a good start you can build on it from there okay good questions yes thank you um any other any other thoughts okay great so let's move on yeah thank you uh, with the sanjay for posting that link we'll we'll move on to the next topic here which talks about faith and facts so we've already discussed it actually and said that faith is based on the truth whereas um you know in reality or in uh, the natural world there are facts facts are like you know how we say uh, somebody is sick the report says they are not well they have this condition that problem this health issue but what is the truth by the stripes of jesus they they were healed okay so there are facts but there is the truth now faith does not deny the facts faith will not say that um um okay i don't believe it i don't believe there is a report i don't believe i need medicines i don't believe uh, you know i need to exercise i don't believe you know i have to do anything to improve my health god's word says i am healed i am healed i'll do whatever i want i'll eat whatever i want you know i won't exercise because i'm going by the truth i'm denying all the facts but faith doesn't work like that got it yes faith is based on the truth but it will not deny the facts denying the facts um it's it's not a very uh, good thing to do you got it so okay i am believing that uh, you know i am going to be a minister of god you know i am going to serve the lord but what are the facts the facts may be that okay today i don't know too much of the word of god i don't know how to pray i don't know how to flow in the gifts of the spirit so these are the facts i can't deny it denying means i don't believe that i don't know the word right 
I know, I know everything. I've never read the Bible, but I know everything. So it, it's like sometimes as believers, we do these things. Okay. Uh, but faith is not denying the facts. You got it. Yes, it's true. I don't know much of the Bible, but I have faith. I will grow. I will learn. I will develop. That's reality. You're in touch with reality. Yes, the report says that I'm not well, but God will. God is my healer. Uh, God has healed me. God will heal me. Uh, I will overcome. Right? That is faith. Faith will not say that report. That doctor, what does he know? He doesn't know anything. He has not read the Bible. Throw the report. Right? You, we don't do things like that as believers. Sometimes that's how believers tend to speak. But that's not correct. Don't just denying the facts is not faith. Faith uh, facts may exist. Acknowledge the facts. Yeah, okay. Today there is a report, but my God is able to change the report. Right? That is correct way of balancing out faith and fact. Okay, you all got it. So I know that you're just getting the concepts, but all of this becomes a part of everyday life. And uh, so I'm sure when you're applying it, you, you will understand it even better. Okay, so this is about faith and facts. Um, then the next thing is the gift of faith. Uh, there is something known as the gift of faith that the Bible talks about. There are um, the, the faith that we have been speaking about is the faith in which one has to grow. The faith that one has to develop. Okay. But the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 12, in the list of the gifts of the Spirit, there is something known as the gift of faith. A gift of faith. So what, are, what does it mean? So for us to get faith, we have to read the word. Because where does faith come from? From the word of God, isn't it? So we, we get faith from the word. That's the normal, normal way to build the faith. But sometimes, supernaturally, God can give us great faith in a moment. In a moment. Okay? That is called gift of faith. And that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So suddenly that faith might come. And... Uh, you know, you might be amazed. How did I say that? How did I do that? In that moment, what happened? God released a gift of faith. And you did it. Whatever it was, you just did it by faith. But after that moment is over, you're back to your normal. Like you're like, oh, could I do that? Could I say that? You're amazed at what just happened. Right? So, gift of faith is generally um, momentary. It comes and goes. It doesn't stay with us. It's like all the other gifts. You have some more gifts which are known as the power gifts. The working of miracles, the working of healings. These are all gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay? One more is gift of faith. So, when they are ministering, Suddenly, the Holy Spirit can give us that faith. You know, have you seen um, like the old time preachers when you go back and some of their videos are still there, like tent revivals they used to have. Uh, there are, there are uh, videos in which you can see, especially I think one particular person, A. a. Allen. It's, it's crazy. Like the things that he does, suddenly he calls a paralyzed man and, uh, you know, he, he kind of like asks that person to stand up. How can a paralyzed person stand, you know, without a wheelchair, without crutches? But miracle happens. Can you imagine in front of the whole crowd, if you do something like that, and if the, if the person falls, what will happen? But when the gift of faith operates, they are able to believe that this person can actually stand up. And it, miracle also happens. People are able to stand up in front of everyone. And there are... You know, families to testify that, yes, actually this person was not able to walk, but now they are able to walk, right? But how did the person who's ministering, like A. Allen, how did he do that? Was he not scared that this man will fall down? 
but in those moments sometimes what happens is the gift of faith operates then they are able to believe that this person will get healed or that person will get healed and they ask them to do so many things in front of the whole crowd and actually the miracle happens and that's amazing because that gift was operating by the holy spirit you got it but if the gift was not operating by the holy spirit maybe they are in the area of presumption where they think that yeah this will happen no that's that's not uh, what we should depend on we should depend on the empowering of the holy spirit so this is the gift of the holy spirit did you all understand okay so gift of holy spirit is not like how you have to read the scriptures and build your faith not like that it comes suddenly by the holy spirit it will come and uh, you're able to do certain things because you had that faith in that moment okay so that is how the gift of holy spirit operates even when we see peter and john okay in acts chapter 3 they see a man that man his whole life he had not walked he was born like that born um you know lame not walked his whole life now you tell me how can anyone think that this man will walk it's not logical isn't it but when peter and john go there they see this man in that moment this man he's begging to peter he's saying hey give me some money peter and john they look at him peter says look silver and gold i don't have what i have i give to you in the name of jesus rise up and walk he holds his hand and the bible says the man stood up he got strength in his feet and he just got up okay how could they even imagine that something like that can happen in that moment you know it's likely that the gift of faith was operating now did peter go everywhere and do this no and he has been to that temple many times because for the jews it was a daily practice to come to the temple so he must have seen the lame man for many years he never did anything but that day that day when he saw this man by the holy spirit he knew this is the right time okay the gift of faith began to operate and the miracles and usually when the gift of faith is operating you have other gifts also operating like healings uh, miracles so the miracle took place the lame man for 40 years started walking okay so this is how the gift of faith operates all right so i i hope that uh, it is clear and we can quickly look at the last two uh, topics here uh, 25 it says use the spiritual muscle god has given to get things done knowledge acted on gets results use your faith the way a mechanic uses his tool so i just want to encourage us we learned so much about faith okay so think about this just like if if i were to gift you um an ipad okay in your dreams only <laughs> not in reality if i were to gift each of you an ipad and say okay this is for you keep it okay enjoy it what would you do a real good nice one the best one how many of you will take it go keep it in your cupboard lock it and tell everybody in the house don't touch that cupboard it's in the cupboard don't go near that cupboard because one really good ipad is sitting inside the cupboard will we do that it's of no use no you have like the best ipad and you're keeping it inside instead of that what should we do use it learn to use it operate you know now you so many skills we can learn maybe you learn how to type you learn how to write you learn how to read videos media sound you can do thousand things with that ipad for that 
what should one do use it so even if you're given the best ipad or the best camera or the best you know anything video editing device it's of no use if you switch it off and put it in one corner to make good use of that tool or gadget that you have you need to use it every day then what happens you become an expert you you learn how to you know uh, see so many benefits from that device it's very similar for faith we learn so much about faith now so today after last chapter close the book with the book in the bag right answer all the questions second assignment thank god thank you jesus just go home okay what about faith over no first semester over <laughs> faith is over <laughs> so please don't do that faith is a muscle that we have learned how to use so whatever we have learned use it use it all the time use it every day okay simple ways of using like maybe you get a task and you don't know how to do that task right pray and say lord i'm believing you you are, you gave me this i can do this i can do all things through christ who gives me strength come on let me work on it let me try you give me the wisdom god will guide lead what am i doing i'm operating my faith muscle you got it or somebody gives an opportunity they say brother can you speak can you sing can you do this can you do that first we are very scared then we say okay i'll try okay what are you doing operating your faith muscle use it that is how your faith muscle becomes so strong and maybe today you're facing one difficulty in your life and you're thinking how how is the devil doing this causing so much disturbance use your faith muscle you say lord you said in your word if i speak to the mountain the mountain will be uprooted okay you mountain i'm speaking to you in the name of jesus i command you to be uprooted what are you doing using your faith muscle so you see every day you're feeling sick you're feeling tired command your body you say be healed in jesus name so this is how daily little by little little by little we are using our faith muscle and the more you use it you learn how to walk in faith live by faith okay live means what live means all the time the just shall live by faith got it so in this manner operate god has given us a beautiful tool in our hands faith put it to use only then it is of benefit for all of us and um finally use your faith to dominate dominate situations circumstances see when we are wanting to live for god there will be lot of challenges there will be lot of uh, i mean i'm not prophesying but i'm just telling you facts these are facts we can't deny the facts right so these are facts jesus only said in this world you will have lot of tribulation but take heart i will overcome the world so i can use my faith on a daily basis to fight the devil right so you have all of us have to engage in some amount of spiritual warfare what will satan do he'll bring doubt he'll bring confusion time to time he'll say you can't do this don't agree with him you also don't say yeah i can't do this don't agree with him you say you devil i rebuke you in jesus name how dare you speak to me like this i can do all things through christ who gives me strength right so put up a fight faith dominates faith overcomes so every day we have to you remember that wrestling we did when wrestling over here every day wrestle overcome the devil got it how to overcome faith through faith we will overcome got it fine so with that i think we have wrapped up the concepts 
Uh, but yeah, even as you do the assignment, I'm sure you'll learn more. So this is about the faith um, subject. And uh, in the next session, you can make use of it to do your assignments. OK, uh, Sister Gertrude, did you have a question? I can see your hand raised up. Yes, sister. I just want to say uh -huh. that uh, when I was praying in the spirit in tongues, mm. I got this boldness to pray in the warfare because I couldn't do it before. And mm. when I prayed, sister, that uh, it was not me, it was the Holy Spirit was praying in a very bold way. Like, you know, there were so many strongholds in my children's life that I could pray that day. And yes. I feel it is a gift of the spirit that Lord has made my faith, you know, a gift of the faith that he has made my faith stronger now than before. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Yes, yes uh, I just want to give all the glory to our Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Yeah. Uh, so Esther is uh, asking, uh, when do we expect the results of the assessment? OK, so. Uh, I would actually need to sit and correct it, which I have not been able to do. So hopefully, uh, I think only by next week, Esther. So you should be able to get the uh, results of your first assignment. And the second assignment will be um, like the marking will happen automatically. So you'll get your results right away. OK, great. All right, so with that, let us pray and we shall close. Who would like to pray today? Yes, Akhil. Let's pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling us to complete this course and this session of faith, O Lord. Teach us, O Lord, as your children to be not only hearers of your word, but also to be doers of your word. We thank you for ma'am and her dedication towards uh, explaining every minuscule concept, things that we have misunderstood, things which we have unused, uh, and help us to put those things into practice in the times to come. We thank you for each one of us who have put the effort to listen to the classes and to Use this in our day-to-day -day lives, O oh Lord. We pray for your peace and presence over each one of us. We thank you once again in the precious matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And thank you. Thank you, all students. God bless you. All the best for your final assignments.